James Madison is on the first string of the Founding Fathers, but maybe he doesn't get played enough. Here's George Washington on the dollar bill. Thomas Jefferson is on the two dollar bill. I don't have one of those. Hamilton on the ten. Franklin on the hundred. But you're not going to find James Madison in your wallet because they stuck him on the $5,000 bill between Grover Cleveland on the $1,000 and Salmon P. Chase on the $10,000. Not good product placement. The one honor everybody gives him is Father of the Constitution because he helped plan, write, and ratify it. In every important play, he was a major player. In 1786, Madison and Alexander Hamilton hijacked a conference on interstate commerce in Annapolis, Maryland, and turned it into a call for a constitutional convention. In 1787, at the Philadelphia Convention, Madison and two Pennsylvanians, Governor Morris and James Wilson, gave the most speeches. Madison took notes on every session, leaving the most complete record of what was said. From late 1787 to early 1788, Madison helped Hamilton and John Jay write the Federalist Papers to boost the Constitution in New York against the resistance of Governor George Clinton. In 1788, Madison led the fight for ratification in his home state, Virginia, against former Governor Patrick Henry. And in 1789, once the new Constitution had gone into effect, Madison, now a congressman, was President Washington's right-hand man, advising him on his new executive role. Madison also pushed a Bill of Rights through the first Congress, something Henry, Clinton, and Thomas Jefferson thought the Constitution lacked. The Constitution was made by many men, but no man did more for it than Madison. Madison was more than a hard worker. He was a deep thinker. He had three big ideas about how the Constitution could work. The first concerned the nation's size. Most republics in history had been small, mainly ancient city-states. But the United States already stretched from Maine to Georgia. How could it be one huge republic instead of 13 smaller ones? Madison argued at the Constitutional Convention that bigger republics were actually safer than small ones. If we enlarge the sphere of government, we make it harder for vicious factions to take power. His second big idea concerned the government's complexity. The new Constitution created an executive, two houses of Congress, and a judiciary alongside 13 states, with more to come. In the Federalist Papers, Madison wrote that the interior structure of the government was so complex that its constituent parts would keep each other in their proper places. Ambition must be made to counteract ambition. His third big idea concerned public opinion. What if the size of the country and the complexity of government wasn't enough to stop a vicious faction from taking over? Then, virtuous leaders would have to mobilize public opinion. In a series of newspaper articles in 1791 and 2, Madison called for an empire of reason over the whole country. Then, every good citizen will be a sentinel over the rights of the people. Madison was asking ordinary Americans to be full-time participants in the political process. In fact, James Madison was the father of politics as we know it. He took that role because of a fight with his former ally, Hamilton. Hamilton, as first Treasury Secretary, created a national debt and a national bank. As a former merchant's clerk, Hamilton thought he was bringing America into a modern world of finance. As a Virginia planter, Madison thought Hamilton was enriching his banker friends. Forget for now who was right. What's important is what Madison did. 
In 1791, Madison and Secretary of State Jefferson took a vacation in upstate New York and New England. They fished for trout. Jefferson wrote a letter to his daughter Polly on birch bark from a canoe. But Robert Troop, a New York lawyer and friend of Hamilton's, thought the two travelers had another purpose. There was every sign of a passionate courtship, he warned Hamilton, between Jefferson and Madison and local politicians who had their own quarrels with Hamilton, including George Clinton. Madison and Jefferson opposed Hamilton's financial system. To fight it, they needed allies outside Virginia. Their trip to New York was a shopping trip. Madison also started an opposition press. He reached out to Philip Freneau, an old friend of his from Princeton. Madison introduced him to Jefferson, who gave him a no-show job in the State Department. But Freneau's real job was to edit the National Gazette, a newspaper that slammed Hamilton and President Washington. Washington called him that rascal Freneau. He was the first in a long line of partisan media. Madison's last step was to name his political party. It was a hard step for him to take, because the founders all thought of themselves as austere patriots, above parties. But Madison knew that patriots have to fight for what's important. In 1792, he named his party the Republican Party. In 30 years, they changed their name to what it now is, the Democratic Party. Madison's party has changed its base many times, from slave-owning planters to big government multiculturalists. But fear of Hamilton's banker friends is woven into its DNA. The world's oldest constitution and America's oldest political party. James Madison is father of them both.